Archeo Death, walking in the footsteps of past funerals. Hi, I'm Professor Howard Williams and I'm an archaeologist and one of my research interests is the archaeology of cremation practices, past and present. The rituals, the ceremonies, the spaces, the monuments and the landscape context in which cremation takes place. Now I'm in a churchyard here today and uh, there are lots of inhumation graves, graves covering the unburned dead, but also uh, churchyard cemeteries across uh, England and Wales contain memorials and places of burial for the cremated dead. Cremation is now the premier mo mode of disposal of the dead in the UK, uh, more generally. Um, we're looking at 80% plus uh, individuals are cremated uh, with the current coronavirus uh, pandemic that may be shifting even higher. Um, cremation is therefore the dominant Western death way, way of disposing of the dead. Um, and in many past societies, cremation was practiced too. And in previous videos, I've addressed some of those uh, different um, societies from the uh, early Middle Ages or the late Iron Age, as it is in Scandinavia. And also, I've dealt with uh, 19th, 20th, and 21st century landscapes and memorials to the cremated dead, how they're similar but also differ from those of the inhumed dead. Um, but in this short video I just wanted to reflect on the archaeology of cremation in terms of how we visualize past open-air cremation practices and this is very much a bit of a problem or challenge for us as archaeologists because so often we've uh, devalued cremated remains they are often more shallowly placed they they may cremated human bone may appear in pyre related features in, in, uh, in uh, secondary and other deposits and pits it may appear in burials, in cinerary urns, or associated with other kinds of casual discard or disturbed contexts. So you find cremated human material um, in many different contexts. We often call them cremations, as if that covers everything. But as many have argued, including Jackie McKinley, very vociferously, calling things cremations just describes the fact that we've got burnt human material. It doesn't tell us anything about the technology, anything of the ritual. And so often the contexts are disturbed and fragmentary. And even when we have high quality hostility, logical research that can be done to tell us something of the age, sex, pathologies of the deceased individual, something of the pyre technology, the cremation technology involved, we still often can't visualise those rites. And so one of our greatest challenge in mortuary archaeology is explaining or communicating to people just how varied and different cremation may have been at very different times in the human past. How do we do that? Well, obviously, uh, for me, this is one of the great challenges because often people today just don't know where to start. They haven't seen an open air cremation. And it's not just the burning of the body in an open air context at day or night time. It's the processions, the, the, the materials, the substances, the people associated with the build up to that event. Maybe multiple locations, including religious buildings, settlements and uh, roadsides, rivers and streams may be part of the journey to the cremation site. And then after Afterwards, there may be many complex stages of procedure involving waiting for the pyre to cool or deliberately cooling it, um, selecting out aspects of the cremated material, taking them to further locations, multiple locations or a single location, disposing of the dead, memorials erected. In other words, when we talk about cremation, we're talking about many different stages of cremating the dead in the past. Not, not simply the open air act of conflagration, but many different ways in which the dead are um, transformed and translated in the journey from um, recently deceased human being to cremated corpse. And remember that in some past societies it's quite clear that they didn't cremate the dead immediately. That may have been a secondary rite that took place after a, perhaps a lengthy, maybe even months or years after death. So the relationship between cremation and how we understand it is often mediated by speculation or a few tropes in our modern popular culture. And in other videos, I will be talking and critiquing how fantasy genre, uh, historical dramas, sci-fi portray cremation um, as an act um, from that, uh, from the Vikings TV show, Game of Thrones. We have these tropes of how cremation should look um, dished out to us by Hollywood and uh, production companies, The Last Kingdom also. And this only takes us so far. And often we had to rely on artists to help us visualise cremation proceedings. And in a piece of research I did with Dr Aaron Watson um, a couple of years ago, uh, we reflected on past and current and our own endeavours to try and visualise cremation in the archaeological record through a range of pieces of art and 
while our attempts have their own baggage, own issues with them, own problems with them, we have tried to use Aaron's artistic skills and my vision for how cremation works in the human past to create some very different and perhaps deliberately alien or disconcerting portrayals of cremation in, in, in the archaeological record. Now this is important. Art and how we use it is central to what we do as archaeologists. We're a visual subject and how we visualise complex procedures and the traces from the archaeological record makes a great deal of, it, of, of difference to how our research is understood as a scholarly community but also how we communicate via heritage sites, museums, um, digital contexts, popular magazines, how we communicate our research findings. So as well as evaluating cremation in the museum context, how it's displayed, as I have done in a previous video, I've also been involved in trying to think about new ways in which we visualise the dead. Now, my artistic skills are, are very poor, but I will be sharing some of my own attempts to, and I have shared some of my other own attempts to use my own almost absent artistic skills to communicate the story, but also there's a whole range of ways in which we can work with artists and archaeological illustrators to develop new ways of not simply showing cremation as a single moment, as a single event, a single act of burning, but as thinking about it as a complex long-term ceremonial process involving various materials, elements, seasons, times, um, human agents, animal agents, plants uh, that are involved as, as the fuel, as, um, as a scent, as aroma, as perfume. Um, all ran manner of multi-sensorial aspects to the cremation process over a long period of time. And this is a challenge for us moving forward and something we've got to keep working at. Offering the public different versions of cremation, more than simply the Game of Thrones or the Last Kingdom or the Vi TV show Vikings can offer. And archaeologists in doing so are never going to get a single right way of visualising cremation in the human past. We haven't got time machines, we can't go back. Um, but our main job will be to think of new ways we can visualise that in comic book form, in uh, audiovisual form, um, to think about how cremation in the human past was complex, varied, vivid, uh, disturbing, uh, but also um, variable in times and places in different kinds of social, cultural, religious uh, settings. So I'm going to be working with other individuals moving forward to try and develop new ways of visualising cremation in the human past. I've got research already available that has looked at this issue and reflected on past work. And I hope this is something that makes you think again about how we move from a static archaeological record of graves, traces of funerary material, to a, a story we can tell to ourselves as academics and also the wider public. If you've enjoyed this Archeo Death video, why not check out the Archeo Death blog at howardwilliamsblog.wordpress.com.